Hello. Happy Wednesday. I made it. I hope you did too. I'm so glad to be here and excited to be here for our first uh, live teaching on the Feather Along. I hope you're as excited as I am. Um, I've had breathing treatments today and new medications, so I should be able to make it through. i very excited. I was able to quilt this afternoon, which is the best medicine ever. Um, how's everybody doing? Just trying to find comments on my phone. Ah, it's in my ears. Um, my phone is talking in my headphones, uh, in my hearing aids. Good morning, Austin. Good morning in Australia. Hi, Janet. Um, I'm glad you're here. Hello, Marie. It's good to see you all. Are you as excited about this as I am? Because I'm really excited about this. Um, today is a weird day. It is in the 60s today, um, Fahrenheit. So I'm trying to convert that uh, mid mid 20s. Maybe it's just, I mean, it's raining, so it's not a nice day, um, but it's not January in New York. It should be like two. Yay, Sarah, I'm glad you're here. Hi, Carol. Um, yes, it's amazing. A little oxygen will do wonders. Um, Elizabeth, I'm glad you're here. Uh, I uh, I loved the feather class that I put out, but I thought it'd be fun to go go through it together with you again um, for those who didn't do it the first time or didn't finish it or had... Um, life get in the way. So um, I'll be I'll be talking about, uh, I have some new video and some new things. Hi, Sarah. So I want to show you um, a few hints if you haven't ever stitched feathers before. So, hi, Barbara. <coughs> <coughs> if you've never stitched feathers before, I have a video to show you. So let me pull that up. Excuse me. The urge to cough is wonderful. Uh, let's see. I'll be right there. It closed down on me. Here we go. And let me share this with you. This is why I wanted to learn the software, at least some of the software last year, so it wouldn't be so bad. Let's see, I'm gonna share this window, which is this one. Okay, so five hints. I don't know what is going on with my computer screen. So five hints for forming feathers. Did my sound make it back, Jenny? I hope it did. Um, so what I have um, for some hints, let's go through these one at a time. Stitch one feather at a time and then pause. When you're learning feathers, you don't have to stitch all of the feathers at once. You don't need to have the whole quilt figured out. Just try one feather. Oh good, I'm glad the sound's coming through. And then stitch one side of a spine at a time. Don't switch back and forth. I know a lot of people have tried to stitch left feather, right feather, left feather, right feather, or top feather, top feather, bottom feather, top feather, bottom feather. I have trouble changing direction that often. If it works for you, great, but it's just a hint. Try stitching just one side at a time. The loud music, okay, let's turn that down. Can I, where's the music? Here it is. You can even just turn that really far down. <laughs> feathers on the left side of the spine and feathers on the right side of the spine don't need to match each other. So if you put four feathers on the left side of the spine and five feathers on the right side of the si spine in the same place, that's okay. Um, on a straight line, I might want to match it, but when I'm doing curves, I don't pay any attention to what's on the other side of the spine. I stitch my feathers wherever they fall, 
And then I stitch the other side and stitch the feathers wherever they fall. I never look from one side to the other. It's not my business um, what's going on there. Not matching on the right and left is so important. It, it's just putting an unrealistic burden on us. It's an unnecessary burden. Um, stitch feather in the same direction. Don't stitch up one side of the spine and down the other. Um, I've had a lot of students say, but I want to be able to stitch feathers up one side and down the other. And I always think, funny, I want to stitch pretty feathers, and I can't stitch pretty feathers when I do that. I'll stitch feathers in this direction, make a knot, and then stitch feathers in this direction. Again, if you can, great. There's no, um, there's no laws about it, but these are just some hints to get started, like some things you might have ideas about that aren't necessarily true. And don't give up is the most important one. Quilt a whole quilt before judging your feathers. The purpose of this first lesson in the feather class and in what I'm quilting tonight is to give you something to practice on. You're gonna need to make bad feathers. Um, I hate saying the word bad, it sounds very judgmental. Feathers that you're not happy with. And then you're going to need to look at them and assess them and figure out what went wrong and how to fix them. So this is a practice piece. That's why I had it um, made out of a jelly roll, something really quick. Um, and this one is made out of a la mode, a really, really, really quick um, quilt. So hopefully, let's stop sharing. Toe feathers, yes, they'll be coming. Carol, we will be doing the toe feathers today. Uh, that's, in the, that's in the new video as well. So uh, hopefully those, those hints gave you, um, it gave you a few ways to lower your standards. Your first feathers were horribly wonky, Tara. Yeah, mine I cried over, like for years. It's, it's really okay. Um, I had to make the feathers, I, it was a process of learning. Now, this is being shown on YouTube and on Facebook. And if I teach this live when it's not being recorded, I usually show a video of my grandchildren, um, two videos, one of each of my grandsons. Uh, the baby doesn't qualify yet. She's not, she's not old enough for this just yet. Close, so close. So the first video I show is of my second grandson learning to walk. And he's toddling away from the camera. And then he goes, boom, and falls down. And then he gets up. And he goes, boom, again. Um, no one looks at him and go, wow, you failed. You are not meant to do walking. You should try something else. No one told him that. They said, good job, try again. Because you are not going to take a baby who can't walk and have them running and never fall down and never get bumps um, on their heads. Uh, parents today don't know what it's like to have their kids learn to walk and get that nice row of black and blue marks all over their face right when you have pictures scheduled because they have cameras now. What? Crazy. Um, so that's one video I show. Your jelly roll quilt turned out wonky, but I'm sure someone will love it, Trudy. Uh, I've given mine away. That's why I'm not, I can't show mine. Um, the, cl the class was several years ago. It was three years ago. I think it was a pandemic class. <coughs> so it was uh, 20, 2021. Um, yeah, two years ago, it was a pandemic class. By the, when you did the quilt in the class, Janet, by the time you were finished, the feathers just flowed. Yep, keep on going. You will get it. You cannot judge it by that baby falling down one time, saying you're not meant to be a walker. Now, for equal time with, uh, with my older grandson, I have another video of him learning to ride a bicycle. Um, his training wheels were loose, so my son took them off. And my grandson is precocious as the, you know, the best bicycle rider in the entire state of Connecticut. So uh, there are a video of him driving, uh, riding down the driveway, turning, and then falling into a bush. But the next day, I got a video of him running, uh, riding down the driveway, turning, and not falling into a bush. So anytime you want to judge your feathers, you can say, good job, keep going. Good job, keep going. Heather, yours were... <laughs> Yours were the same. Yeah, that's why I give you the hands-on for this. And what I'm doing, um, you know, hands-on projects for each one. And I'm giving, this week I was able to pull together a second project. Again, I'm obviously having um, some uh, issues with my health and it's nothing major. Um, I got the flu a month ago and it kicked up asthma. So we're just trying to get the asthma under control. 
your practice with a purpose piece came out great, Sarah, but every time you they're like toes, uh, well, we're going to, we're going to give you a chance to reboot whenever your body cooperates. Um, and I understand what it's like when bodies don't cooperate. I was so happy to be able to stitch a few feathers today. So um, that's um, the beginning of what I wanted to tell you about feathers, that this is, this is your learning to quilt feathers piece. This isn't the, um, my son's wedding quilt that's going to be photographed and in a magazine and published and all of that. That's not this quilt. This is, we need something. You need to stitch feathers to practice them. You can't talk about them, think about them, look at them. You can stitch them. That's the only thing you can do to get them to work is you have to get them in your hands or in your hands. So let me um, share a screen and we'll do a little bit of drawing. There is some drawing in the class, I believe. Um, and if you have purchased the feather class, it's in the description here. You can go back and watch full videos of everything all the time. Um, and it's very concise. I made the videos as long as they needed to be. I did make them extra long for filler. If it took this long to explain it, that's how long the video took. And you can just watch it again and again. <clears throat> Please excuse me. Uh, so let's share screen and go to here. Share. Okay. So in a second, we should be seeing a whiteboard. <clears throat> and if for those of you who are going, what are the toes people are talking about? This is in the video as well, but for those who um, in the class video, but for those who are just checking it out and want an idea of what's in the class, I'll give you, I've got to give you my hints, right? Um, I've decided as a teacher, that whenever possible, I'm going to be generous. So I'm not gonna say, well, I'm not gonna show you that because it's in the class you have to pay for. I will show you that. I'd like you to pay for the class. Um, so, but if you don't, I want you to get this information because this is this was really helpful to me. Uh, let's see, Tara is here saying, oh, she took my feather class long time ago and she um, she's gonna make, Tara is an amazing quilter. So here, as I'm making feathers, I'm starting with a straight line just because it's easier for me to think about. And if I'm working on a long arm machine, I'll be working from left to right. I'm going to go up a ski slope, around a circle, and back down to the spine. And those are the toes people are talking about. Oh, Sherry, that's great that you have a top ready to go. So yes, those are toes. I get it, but the circles aren't really there. They're just pretend. Um, you can draw them in if you want, but then erase them later. So uh, I go up a ski slope, around the circle, and hold the curve. What I don't do is go up the ski slope, around the circle, and then don't know what I'm doing. So the feather just goes and bad things happen. So let's show you more feathers. I, I, I like what not to do sometimes because um, how you become a quilt teacher is to make every mistake known. And I have, I did that for you. So another thing um, that I've seen happen is feathers start going this way and end up going that way and falling down. That can happen when your feet are too close together because these take up more room up here and less room down there. What I'm thinking to do instead is to spread those feet out and spread those feet out and spread those feet out. There are no original mistakes. I'm not sure. I might have made some, but no, we all struggle through the same way. We all learn. And you're seeing my quilting nearly 30 years after I started machine quilting. It's not perfect. I do it because I enjoy it. So you can see how wide apart my feet are spread here, and that's gonna keep them standing up. Let's see, another thing I've seen happen to feathers, so sorry, I was having trouble clearing my board. I'm used to the Zoom feature instead of this, because um, I teach a lot of Zoom classes. I see feathers that do this. They just look like M's. Um, my, my kids um, used to call m and M's. M's. I'm not sure you have M&Ms in Australia. I know there's Smarties in Canada, but I don't remember what you have in Australia. But they're the little chocolate coated candies. 
that have M's on them. Um, but that looks like the little lowercase letter M. That's pretty easy to fix. You just have to turn it. You've seen a lot of feathers with narrow bases. The ones I show are not like that. That's correct, because I'm teaching you how to form a feather. I too can make feathers with narrow bases, but not when I'm trying to get the shape of the feather in my head. And that is the basis of this class, is to give you some basics of how to form a feather. Your big challenge is not getting the bottoms flat on the way up and sloping it enough on the way down. You draw two parallel lines to help, but you can't seem to gauge how much to dip your curves. Okay, have you tried drawing in the circles? That might help to actually make the toes. I don't know what I did to my pen. There we go. Like that. Uh, so when I go in, I come back and in and back. Sometimes this line is the same line. Sometimes there's a big space between the line. And heaven forbid, sometimes I even overlap them a little bit. Um, and if it's matching thread, I'll let it go. I'll keep it on. Now, I don't stitch for these classes and samples in matching thread. Um, matching thread is really hard for you to see on camera. So you are going to see all of my bobbles and mistakes. And this afternoon, I was quilting um, the new sample. And you'll see that it is far from perfect. I'm also on a lot of steroids trying to calm my lungs down. So I'm literally shaking. Um, but I wanted to quilt and I was fine with the quilt not being perfect. Uh, it, it's not what this class is about. If you want perfect feathers, I can tell you other amazing award-winning quilters that you should take feather classes from. Um, but hopefully what this class is going to do is get you ready for them. Because uh, I know I've taken uh, some of their classes and I was like, wow, that's easy for you to do. Have you ever felt like I missed the basic tutorial? Um, whenever you get to a class, I'm like, I'm obviously missing something. There's something they forgot to tell me. So I want to give you the basic shapes of the feather so that then you can go and do what another teacher does. I like to teach the basics. Um, I like to encourage um, people who are a little less than confident and to just give you enough information that you can quilt the way you want and then veer off however you want to go. Um, so those are the formation of the feathers that I wanted to draw. And, and on the first quilt that I'm making for um, in the class and in the first quilt that I'm making in tonight um, for the lesson one, I'm stitching on a straight line. Next week, we'll, we'll stitch on a curved line. But th today, we're just working on the shape of the feather. That's all this first project is. So don't go for, oh, it has to be perfect and the curves aren't there and it's kind of, we're working it out. Um, I, I can't see you, um, but I am old enough and I'm guessing several of you are as well, to uh, remember handwriting exercises. That's kind of uh, you know, where we did these before we learned how to do our cursive writing and such. Um, I had to do those in school back when they taught um, handwriting exercises. This is a feather writing exercise where you're just going to make a lot, a lot, a lot of feathers. Um, so that's that's the first quilt we have. Let me stop this one, come back to some comments. Sarah, you haven't seen my video yet. I'm kind of shaky and I, I am. I'm also catching on fire um, and I'm trying not to talk too fast because, um, you know, high dose steroids, super fun. But then again, I've become critically dependent upon oxygen. Uh, many of you have asthma. You know what it's like whenever your asthma flares up. Um, so. There we go. Let me go back to our screen. Hi, I can see you again. Cursive writing and feathers, and everyone's are gonna look different. A long arm Fred did those, and you're hoping to get that good one day. Oh, I hope, um, I hope you get as good as you are, Sarah. I don't hope you get to be like her. I want you to be like you, because no, you can't insert a picture in this, in this video program, sorry. But you can post it in Debbie Brown's Machine Quilting Studio and it'll show up. Um, so I do have a video um, to show you about quilting tonight uh, because I'm not gonna show the video from the class. You can see that in the class, but it's the same, it's the same thing just on another quilt. Let me pull up the video. Where did I hide it? There we go. 
stop and let me share it with you. Share video. Okay, so we are in the video. Sarah, you can. You've come so far. For those um, who aren't familiar with Sarah's work, her quilting is absolutely amazing. And it's been wonderful watching it develop over the last three years. Um, and, you know, feathers, it's okay to have something that challenges you a little bit because everything else looks like it came really easy to you. You're an amazing quilter. So um, this is my a la mode quilt. I pulled out an old quilt top that I had. <coughs> I am... Um, quilting feathers in brown thread. This is my one of my top 10 machine quilting threads. This is the tan thread and bobbin. Um, and I'm quilting it in just the background. Um, Sarah, you're saying the, um, the feathers close up are a challenge. Uh, I like to say when viewed from a polite distance, my feathers are wonderful. So you can use that if you need to. If someone gets up close, smack their nose and make them back off. So let me play this video that I filmed for you this afternoon. I meant to do it earlier, but I've been sick for a month. I'm stitching feathers on my a la mode cutie quilt using my Handy Quilter Capri. It's a stationary long arm machine. My home sewing machine is in the shop waiting for parts. So I'm machine quilting on my stationary long arm. I have oriented my quilt going up and down like I do on a home sewing machine uh, because that's an easy way to see what I'm doing. If I were quilting this on a long arm on a frame, a traditional long arm on a frame, I would quilt this left to right. I would quilt my feathers in rows left to right instead of columns. Um, on a stationary long arm, you can quilt in either direction. So this line here in between two rows of fabric is my spine. And I'm only going to quilt feathers in the background fabric. The background fabric on this quilt is peach. So I'm going to quilt feathers to the right here, and then I'm going to quilt feathers to the left here. Um, I have used wool batting because I love wool batting, and I love the loft of it. I love seeing... I'm just going to pause a second and, and see how the video is coming out. Are you hearing it okay? And are you seeing it okay? I think this is the first time I've done a long video. So you can leave in some comments and I'll restart the video. The unquilted fabric puff up and I love seeing the quilted fabric um, push down. In order to make that look right, I'm going to have to stitch along uh, the seam line every time. Thank you, Carol. So to get started, uh, I'm going to draw in my circles. If, the, if feathers are completely new to me, I'm going to draw in my circles. I'm going to stitch up the ski slope, around the circle, and back to the spine. And then I'm going to stitch down to the beginning of my feather and back up. I know with the circles drawn on them, they look like toes, but if you need help forming your feathers, think about going up a ski slope, around a circle, and back to the spine. finished um, the first section. And now, um, one of my statements is to only stitch feathers on one side at a time, uh, which I've done. But what I don't recommend doing is a feather here, a feather there, a feather here, a feather there, a feather here, a feather there. Um, I have trouble keeping track. So I'm stitching a bunch of lefts, then a bunch of rights, then a bunch of lefts, etc. So I've stitched one. Now I'm going to stitch the next one. And I can rest. Now 
now I can lay down in a darkened room to recover and work on stitching in the opposite direction. And now that I'm at the bottom, I'm going to make a knot, cut my thread, and go back up to the top and stitch down again. I make all my feathers in the same direction. How fun does that look? I'm stitching. So let's see, I got some questions in um, while the video was playing. Um, Sarah, I used a blue marker, which is water soluble, and I can just spritz it with some water and it'll go away. Um, the purple markers are air erase, but they actually go away in the humidity. So where I live, it's very humid. I live under the um, canopy of a forest. Um, 
everything's always very damp, like cardboard boxes get soggy. Uh, so water, purple markers just disappear in the summertime. I could only use them in the winter. Um, either is fine. Um, chalk would be fine, whatever you have that comes off easily. Um, I got a question, should we stitch the spine first or not? And that doesn't matter. I think if I had my my sewing machine, I might have taken my walking foot and just stitched in the ditch right down that line first and then not had to worry about retracing, but I don't. Um, it's got some back ordered parts and um, the machine, there was, there was nothing wrong with the machine except it, I killed it. Um, as in, but just by thousands of hours of quilting, um, it just a part wore out and we're waiting for the part as is happening everywhere with supply chain, blah, blah, blah. So um, if, you, if the reason I wanted the spine stitched is I wanted that definition between the quilted versus the unquilted because of the loft of the batting. Whether you have a spine or not is your choice. So um, I think those were the hints um, I had for you. Are there any other questions you have about getting ready to quilt your quilt? Hopefully that answered some of your questions and got you ready um, to get quilting. Uh, again, I chose a highly contrasting thread for my um, for my quilt because I wanted you to be able to see it. And this will probably go to a nursing home uh, and someone will love the quilt. Sarah, was I using the Capri in manual mode? Yes, I was. Um, the reason I'm using the Capri in manual mode is I don't want the stitch regulator to confuse people. I love the stitch regulator, but I'm trying to make this act like a home sewing machine and I didn't want to make it too strange. Um, so uh, this the only reason this isn't being taught on a home sewing machine is because mine's in the shop. Um, and hopefully it'll be coming back shortly. 40% uh, seems to be a good speed to match your hands. That sounds wonderful. And remember, you can post it up to 41, 42 if you're having a fast day and down to 38, 37 if you're taking it slow. Um, I stitch at 700 stitches a minute. Um, you're scared of the stitch regulator. Um, the Capri has a different... Um, I, I understand being scared of stitch regulators, but they are lovely. Uh, nobody buys machines because they want their stitches to be uneven is what I've found. Um, so I turn it off for videos. I don't want the stitch regulator to be the topic of discussion. I want it to, um, I want it to be about the feathers. So I do that on purpose. <clears throat> so hopefully that makes sense. I do typically film all of my classes on a home sewing machine uh, because long armors understand how to adjust for, for, this, for this class take these, this quilt and do it sideways. That's it. Um, you're gonna do exactly what you're doing with your stitch regulator um, on your long arm, but you're gonna do it left to right because that's how the machine is oriented. Oh, Sarah, you were uh, scared of the machine for a week. <sighs> that's fun. Um, I've heard of people who are scared of it for years. I'm not, I'm scared of other things like my embroidery machine, um, but I'm, I'm not scared of quilting machines. Those I'm very comfortable with. So um, what I hope you're able to do this week um, is to get to work on some feathers. And it's okay if you don't finish it. There's no race. These videos are out there. This, um, this video will be held in the Facebook group and it will also be held on YouTube. I know there are some people who aren't on Facebook. So I really wanted to get this on YouTube for them. Um, so you can watch it in either place and I'll put together a playlist over there. Uh, I will send out um, the... Uh, the links to all of that in my next newsletter. Let's see. Uh, Sarah, we are sisters separated. You got a needle bar. Mine was a bushing. Yeah, it was bad. And the needle bar is doing this. Bad things are happening. Um, so let me see. I have one more video I wanted to play again. Let's go back. Stop. Go back to here, share, window. I wish I was really smooth at this, but for hopefully this is getting the idea across. Um, I knew I wanted to up my game to be able to draw and share video. I'm not as smooth as whenever I do this professionally with a team of, um, a production team, because I have filmed professionally. This is just me in my studio. So I wanted to go back to the five hints for forming feathers. Just as a reminder, this is also going to be on Instagram and Facebook um, by the time we're done here. Uh, I was thinking of putting these together on a downloadable page um, if you're interested in those hints. So stitch one feather at a time, then pause. 
Stitch one side of the spine at a time. Don't switch back and forth. Feathers on the left and right sides of the spine. Don't need to match. Stitch feathers in the same directions. Don't stitch up one side of the spine and down the other. And don't give up. Hold a whole quilt before judging your feathers. Um, and this is the information on continuing along with our feather along. Let me go back so I can see your pretty. There we go. Hi, I can see the main page. Carol, all thank you. Um, some people have asked me if I wanted to be more professional, and I really don't because I'm so inconsistent. Like, I did not know till about four o'clock today if I was going to be able to do this live tonight, if I was going to have enough air to talk because um, I was in with breathing treatments not too long ago. Um, so I, I don't have, um, my timeline doesn't work that way. But I think um, that for the people who watch me, they get the point, uh, even if it's not a perfect production. Carol, oh, I'm glad that helped. So um, I'd love to have you post pictures. Show me your pictures in the Machine Quilting Facebook group. Show me what you're doing um, and how it's going. Ask your questions there. I promise I'm not going where for, for at least another week. Um, I, I'm not walking very far because, uh, you know, oxygen. Um, so I'd love to see what you're doing, and I will get to work on some surprises for next week. Thanks for being patient with me. Uh, oh, Sarah, we're at the same place at the same time. Yay! Um, but that's why I am storing it on the on the Facebook group and storing it on YouTube for people who want to watch it again. Um, if you are interested in purchasing the um, Feather class, uh, it's got more information all in a direct line, written information, etc. So I use writing, I use photos, um, I use drawings, I use drawing videos, I use spoken videos, um, and I use quilting videos. Um, and again, they're as long as I think they need to be to get my point across. And um, and they've already been proofread by a whole bunch of students who, if they had questions, I went back and clarified. So um, if you want to buy the class, please do. But if you are um, just going to follow along with the YouTube videos um, and the Facebook live videos, I think you'll get some good feather information out of this. What you won't get is the eight patterns. Those, those are in the class. So take care of yourself. Um, that's my main job right now is taking care of myself. I lay around and do a whole lot of nothing. Um, but I get to quilt. Because Wouldn't it be terrible if my hobby was distance running? That would be terrible. I'd be missing all the fun in my life. The fun in my life can be accomplished in a chair. Um, thank you, Trudy. I have a perfect life. Um, I have family who loves me. Um, I'm warm and safe and well-loved. Uh, so thanks for letting me hang out with you. Take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. And happy quilting. I'll see you again on Tuesday.